Hello everyone, this is Tim. Book two for this month. Hope on the tightrope. Okay. And we're reading through it. Oh, it's a nice little book, but it's packed with a lot of heavy stuff. So let's continue. <clears throat> Love is wisdom. Love, excuse me, of wisdom is a meditation on and preparation for death. Because it's in the death that you are able to go through a transformation where your education in the deepest sense or what the Greeks call paideia can occur. This cultivation of yourself and, ma and maturation of your soul teaches you the difference between the frivolous and the serious, between the superficial and the substantial. What kind of human being do you want to be? What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? What kind of witness do you want to bear? The prophetic question remains, are you willing to be in solidarity with those who, whose tears are flowing? Those are profoundly human questions. You're made in the image of God. You're a featherless, two-legged, linguistically conscious creature born between urine and feces. That's us. One day your body will be the culinary delight of terrestrial worms. You know that. Be honest. Put on your three-piece suit if you want to, but that's not armor against death. The question is, who are you going to be in the meantime, in this time and space? You don't get out of time and space alive. Martin Luther King Jr. was one wave in an ocean that says, I'm willing not simply to live and die for an ideal. I'm willing to learn how to die while I'm alive so I can live life more intensely and abundantly. The life of the mind <clears throat> is about a sense of awe, wonder, openness, and exploration. It's an adventure in exploring different views and viewpoints, different arguments and perspectives. There's a certain spaciousness that goes with it, an expansiveness of heart, mind, and soul that has its own exhilarating joy. There's something about American folk they're so obsessed with comfort, convenience, and contentment. It's just like living in a hotel where the lights are always on. That's why the great novelist Henry James called America a hotel civilization. There's no darkness, no despair, no dread, no suffering, no grief. It's just Disneyland. It's just having fun, smiling all the time living in nice, manicured, deodorized, vanilla suburbs as if there are no dark forces that are penetrating and saturating life wherever human beings go. America is a death-dodging, death-ducking, death-denying civilization. This is what you would expect from a hotel civilization. Disneyland and Disney World have bragged that no one's ever died on their premises. So American. That's not true anymore, by the way, but when he wrote this, it was. Where there is no death, there is no life. There's escape from life. It's fantasy. It's holding at arm's length all those inescapable realities like death, dread, disappointment, discouragement, and disenchantment. Black folk had to deal with social death for 244 years when they sang, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. They are not talking about Disneyland or Peter Pan-like realities of innocence and purity. They're talking about human wounds, scars, and bruises, and still somehow being able to transmit and bequeath certain senses of grace and love to their precious children, even if they couldn't keep track of them as they were sold from one part of the country to the other. The culture of advanced capitalist American society, the culture of consumption, revolves around the market, around buying and selling. This process turns everything into a commodity and undermines value and meaning in the name of ever-increasing profit. This is dangerous because in a marketplace culture, commodification, the ability to put a price tag on everything, dominates more and more spheres of human life. This creates an addiction to stimulation which is necessary to keep the consumer culture economy going. Terrorist attack, we'll show them, we'll protect the American way of life, 
will go shopping. The marketplace culture of consumption undermines community, undermines links to history and tradition, and undermines relationships. The very notion of commitment becomes more and more contested. Addictive bodily stimulation becomes the model for human relationships. We see it in the dehumanizing exploitation of women's bodies in the advertising industry. We see it in TV sitcoms and reality TV shows that are fueled by orgiastic intensity. So we'll stop there and um, hope on a tightrope. You don't have to add much to when you read in Cornell West. I want to thank you for supporting me. Um, and I want to say until next time, take care of your mind, take care of your body, and be safe.